We're Marianne and Chris. In May 2018, we quit the nine to five, rented our house to travel full time. Like everybody, the coronavirus is affecting our daily lives and our around the world drive has now come to a standstill. Good morning. Woo, it's another hot day in the van today. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be sharing uh, our life in the car park and incorporating all of the questions that you have asked us. I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's taken the time out of their day to come up with some fantastic questions. Yeah. So we're going to be answering them today and stick around because we have some exciting news to tell you towards the end of this video. One thing is for sure that life in a van, in the sun, in Turkey is very warm and uh, every morning the sun hits the side of the van and uh, you wake up in a, in a bit of a sweat. So the first job of the day is to cool this van down because it is roasting in here. These plums were really hard, so I thought I'd leave them on the window sitting in the sun for 10 minutes and I completely forgot them. So they've been cooking overnight and they are actually hot to the top. Oh my God, they're actually soft. They feel like they've been roasted. I think they've been cooked. So I'll keep those and I'll have those. Later. You got plum pie for breakfast. We've got plum pie. Morning, Corona. Good morning. Nice. Oh, have a nice itch. Ah, and we got cinders. Good morning, cinders. So the first job of the day is to get the awning out. <clears throat> there you go. So that is out. So we've got somewhere cool to sit outside. We also put uh, a couple of rocks on the bottom of each pole uh, just because we have nearly lost it with the odd gust once in a while so uh, we we'll just do that as a precaution. Always got to start the day with a nice cup of coffee. Cheers my sweetness. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and uh, let's get down to the first question. The first question comes from John Thompson, Chestnut in Hertfordshire and Stephen Henley and it's quite a popular question obviously if two people are asking what software do you use to edit your movies? Okay so I use a package called Filmora 9 and uh, it's a good basic package if you're learning editing and not quite as complicated as um, the Adobe and Final Cut Pro and it's cheaper. David Woods has asked, are the people renting your house, do they still have jobs and are they able to pay the rent? That's a very good question. Uh, with the pandemic, lots of people have been furloughed. They haven't, they're still securing their jobs, but they have actually served notice because they've managed to find a property that they're going to move into and take on full time. So our house is now available for rent check out the financial blog that Chris does monthly and you'll see how we earn our income. Well, Perry likes to get his money's worth because he's asked four questions. And the first question is... You want to see suggestions on what landmarks are a must in Istanbul. We haven't had a lot of time to explore Istanbul yet, but there are some places you have to visit that we've already been to, like the Blue Mosque, the Hagia Sophia, the Grand Bazaar, 
the views of the Vos Bosphorus. So uh, watch this space. Our friend Ursul gave us this book, so we'll be sure to check it out. The next question was, what gifts would you buy for your friends and relatives back home? I don't know what your friends like, Perry, but there's things like lanterns, Turkish delight, and all those traditional Turkish textiles and things like that. The next question Perry asked is, do they barter here? Yes, they do barter here. And in fact, it's encouraged to barter. It's not aggressive, it's just a tradition. The next question from Perry is, you both have medical backgrounds. What is that? I actually was the catering manager of two big hospitals back in the UK. And I worked in administration in the operating theatre department and I also volunteered as a community first responder for many years. One of the lovely things that has been keeping us entertained while we've been uh, self-isolating here in this car park is the local cats. Uh, we started off just with one that we nicknamed Cinders because she has like a, the markings of a, a charred face and um, she's slowly getting more and more tame and uh, then there's the white cat which used to be really 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 skinny and we've kind of fed it up a little bit who we've actually nicknamed Corona because it called, sort of does this cough um, like furball cough and uh, Corona is very naughty um, she tries to get in the van in fact she did make it through the front windows a few times the cats in the the cats in the van oh it's the it's a diff oh no it's Corona hey You can't just come in when you feel like it, you know. Come on then. Okay, out. <laughs> that is so mean. Go on. Out. It's so naughty. Um, she did actually stick her head um, from the roof through the uh, sky vent and uh, she tries to get in the van uh, however she can. The next question is from Sue Kindervata. She says, tell us about your neighbors. I think you mentioned the car was from South Africa. Yeah, we have lovely neighbors. Um, they're over 65, so they've been massively self-isolating, which is the right thing to do. Um, and they're incredibly camera shy. So yes, they are a lovely couple and they've been traveling for many, many years. Um, but I'm not really into the social media thing. The next question is from Julia Ja Adamik and it is, hi guys, I have a question for you. How many subscribers do you expect that you will hit at the end of your journey? That's a hard question to answer, I suppose at the end of which adventure because we are planning to travel forever more. Um, but let's just say by the end of our travels this year, maybe we'll have 20 to 25,000. We appreciate every single one of you that has followed. Actually, what an opportunity. If you're watching and you haven't clicked the subscribe button, you can be one of them. Thank you very much. So it's breakfast time and uh, this morning we're going to have some cereal. Uh, we found some yogurt in our local shop. They do this yogurt. It's a delicious, quite thick yogurt and uh, a little bit of honey in it that somebody gave us a jar of honey, which is delicious and a good way to start the day. Mmm. Okay, so the next question is from Crafter Deacon and they ask, you always look neat and tidy and I just wondered whether you took a travel, a travel iron with you and can you use one on an electric hookup or do we just buy non-iron clothes? Hi Linda and thank you for your question. Uh, we don't have a travel iron. Uh, you can if you're staying on um, electrical pitches and proper campsites you can buy the travel irons that don't take up small space but when we were actually downcycling to a small amount of clothing we just chose things that didn't look so creased and also when we hang up the washing we always try and stretch everything out so it falls nicely and then fold everything up roll it up and keep it safely stacked 
So that's really how we manage it. But thank you for the compliment. Yeah, and our t-shirt, sometimes we do look very creased, especially in the morning, or especially when I don't fold my clothes properly and Marianne tells me off. <laughs> but yeah, no, but we don't have an iron, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bien Bien has asked, you've been traveling quite some time and saw different cultures and religions in some countries. I'd just like to ask, what is your religion or belief? Like, do you believe in God? It's okay to answer if it's too personal. We're here to share, we're happy to share our thoughts with you. That is one of the beauties of travel is experiencing all these different cultures and customs and religions from going into mosques to churches and cathedrals. Um, I was actually brought up um, as a Christian. Um, I do believe in God, um, but I genu genuinely believe that uh, religion is there for goodness and kindness and every uh, religion has the same message. Just be kind to one another and uh, make the world a better place. Do you want to add anything, my sweetness? <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. I was also brought up as a Christian and went to a convent school. Um, I don't believe that religion is dark or scary. For us, we're both really positive and we believe in goodness and kindness. And we also believe that um, respe respect that you give out earns respect back. Um, so for us, it's always about being kind, engaging and accepting other people. And for us, there is only one good power and however you want to call it, you rock on, but it's all good. So normally when we wild camp, we don't actually put the awning out so often, um, but it's been an absolute blessing to have this to create some kind of shade because here in the car park there isn't really any shade other than right in the late evening from this tree um, and as the sun comes round this way it comes under the awning and the shaded area gets smaller and smaller um, so we've actually got this sheet uh, that we bought um, off Amazon I think wasn't it yeah I saw when we were in the Netherlands, I actually saw uh, somebody with an awning and they had like a windbreak sheet, but something that has holes so it doesn't create a sail and whip out the legs. And I thought, what a very good idea. So we found this one and we got this one because it's reflective. So if it's really hot, we could actually put it across the front of the van as well to reflect it from the glass windows. We bought it so that it measures exactly uh, or pretty well exactly the length um, of, the, of the awning or the width of the awning here. Um, so what we do is we um, we use these clips which we bought to put the to put the awning up and they actually fit uh, perfectly onto the edge of the awning there and then that then creates us a lovely uh, shaded area but it works really well for as a windbreak and if it gets really really sunny we have a spare sheet for the bed that we actually stretch out and put uh, because the sun, if it's full sun, it does come through a little bit um, and an extra covering on top of that just creates a little bit of shade. But it works really, really well. And then we've got a couple of carabiner clips that we use and then I can just clip it around the leg and save it from um, flying off with any wind. Yeah, they've got these, uh, these holes in the side um, all the way along the edge so we can actually tie it um, or clip it to the legs of the awning here um, and we also can you know if we need to we do sometimes attach it to the uh, to the struts the supports here of the awning um, depending on which side we want to do it so it's very flexible and it works really really well adventure with bernie has asked is australia on your agenda Hi Bernie, yes it is. Uh, you can see from the map behind us that uh, the red line shows the route we were planning to drive. Australia is on it. Unfortunately with the situation things have changed. But our uh, challenge or our objective is to try and visit every country in the world with either a backpack or in our van 
and so yes Australia is definitely on our list and we will be coming to Australia so Mark Holland has asked hi guys have you had any of those I wish I hadn't come here moments regarding security actually no we haven't we've been We've done, um, if you've been following us for a while, we've been to some countries uh, which have not the best reputations as far as safety. Countries like Honduras, maybe uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua. Um, but to be honest, we haven't experienced any, um, any problems in any of those countries. Yeah, we can only speak as, um, to, as travelers and adventurers. You know, we know that there are socio-economic problems in countries that some of the countries that we visited but as explorers mm. and travelers we've never uh, received any negative attention we haven't received any no. we haven't we, felt scared have i we? think yeah we believe that most people in this world are nice um, and yeah. it's the odds one or two that you see on the news mm. that gives you a preconceived idea about a country we've been backpacking across central america we've wild camped in our van most nights um, around Europe and now we're in Turkey. Um, and from we, our travels before, we've done lots of travel around um, Africa and Egypt and the Far East. Yeah, and and, and I think I, I don't we haven't experienced a problem. Uh, you yeah. have to be sensible when you travel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to answer your question, um, no, so far, so touch good. wood, <laughs> we haven't had any uh, problems like that. Whew. We came into the van just to mix up the scenery and uh, while Marianne's making another coffee and it's definitely too hot so I'm going back outside. So Bob's Adventure asks, if you could build a dream van, what would you make? Well, I don't know that I could ever, ever speak ill of Trudy, um, but we have actually talked about in the future, maybe converting our own van. And there are maybe, I would probably go for an extra half meter maybe. Uh, we love the layout of Trudy. There's loads of social aspects. We love the fact that there's a fixed bed. Um, this is a real like lovely relaxing area and there's a nice social area. Um, in fact, Chris should probably link in the van tour video so everybody can see the type of van we live in. Um, but yeah, I probably wouldn't change much. Maybe the upholstery. I don't like it. I don't like <laughs> the upholstery. Uh, we kept it because we had a dog um, and we weren't going to renew it. But actually now, it's, that's the thing I would change. Yeah, I think we like the layout of Trudy. I do hit my head a lot. Um, so maybe one that's slightly higher so I can actually stand up fully. Um, but I'm not sure. The Fiat Ducato for us has been really good. The layout's great. Uh, maybe a 4x4 vehicle is a possibility in the future. Maybe a Sprinter. But that sort of sized van for us, uh, because we live in it, is more ideal. It's sitting in the window. Can I just check? What is it that you are doing you really are not supposed to be in the van, as we've nicknamed you Corona. Nah, ah, ah. And again, a bit more, a bit more. <laughs> come here. You can come on here, but you can't come on there. Come on, I don't wanna, I don't wanna push you off, but I'm gonna have uh, So Furkan Dayi has messaged and said, what is your next destination? Well, this time we should have been arriving in um, we would have gone through Georgia into Kazakhstan and Russia and Mongolia but obviously the borders still haven't opened so our next destination is Turkey so Tom Timothesis has asked hi I'd be interested to know about the photographic and other kit you use to produce your films i.e uh, is your GoPro on a selfie stick or gimbal which video editor, music source, etc. Um, thanks for sharing. Okay, so let's do this really quickly. Uh, we do all our vlogging with our GoPro Hero 7, which is on a selfie stick, which also has a tripod stand. Uh, we do time lapses on that. I also have a uh, Panasonic FZ1000 bridge camera here that we do some of the slow-mo and B-roll in. Um, I do have a gimbal, but actually we haven't set it up and used it yet. The stabilization in the GoPro is really good. 
we get our music from Epidemic Sound. There's a link down below. Um, what else was there? What video editor we use? We've already answered that, Filmora. We have a full list of the equipment that we use on our Amazon shop, which I'll pop a link down in the description below. The next question comes from Travelling H's. Um, hi both, hope you are both safe and well. How do you feel about the prospect of being free to travel again? Um, hopefully in the near future. And how does your family back in the UK feel about it? Are they worried or concerned about it at all? Stay safe, both of you. Thank you, that's a lovely question. Yeah, how do we feel about traveling again? Um, it's exciting. Uh, we really want to get out and see what's going on. Obviously, there's all the uncertainties of knowing how will people receive you um, because obviously it's been a pandemic. Are people going to be unhappy about seeing strangers? But we'll share all of that um, as it happens. But no, genu genuinely, we just want to get going really. Trudy isn't designed to live in a car park and neither are we. And although it's been fantastic, we want to get out there. And to answer the question about are our family worried, um, of course, everybody's worried about their families like they are worried about us traveling, but they're very supportive. They know we're in a safe place. They know we're sensible. And uh, yeah, we well, kind of sensible and uh, shh, don't tell them. And um, yeah, we can't wait to get exploring again. Cinders has now brought a kitten. We didn't know she had a kitten. Uh, you can maybe see it behind us. And the markings on the kitten are just so beautiful. And uh, we've been watching, um, watching them playing and it's been giving us lots of entertainment. Okay, so here's a good question from Denver. They've asked, after this big adventure around the world in our van, what is next? A boat and travel on the planet's oceans, settling down back home in the UK. We are planning to travel to every country in the world um, and we just wanna keep traveling. We do this because we choose to keep traveling so we don't have a specific plan after this trip. Um, it may well be a backpacking. There's a few things in the pipeline. We'd love to go to India. We'd love to go to the Philippines. We're talking about drive, driving Argentina to Alaska, um, maybe Cape Town to the UK. Who knows? But we um, are definitely going to keep sharing our adventures with you. Um, so no, we're not settling down back in the UK yet. The next question comes from Leanne Samford on Instagram and she's put, is creating a social media following beneficial for middle-aged travellers and is it hard to garner interest? Um, because they're joining, they're going to set off soon. So that's quite an interesting question, isn't it? Mm. Um, I would say that originally uh, we created Tread the Globe and documented our travels for ourselves for our memories um, so we can look back and see all the adventures that we've been up to but also so our family and friends back home can keep in touch with what we're actually doing. I would say there is a benefit and that is mm. um, we've had many more opportunities uh, people see the van and because Chris went crazy with the branding <laughs> uh, people do come up and say oh wow that's amazing because we're actually sharing with people the decision that we made to travel um, and they're really interested in that so we've had the opportunity to be invited out on people's boats in Ireland thank you so much Brendan and uh, we just had a really nice time we've been invited around for dinner um, and to meet people I would also add that um, don't set your expectations of social media and everything too high. Yeah. Um, if you're expecting to do it to make a living, yeah. um, you may be disappointed. It's not a fast thing. You can earn um, some spending money from YouTube and things like that. In fact, we do a monthly financial blog. Mm -hmm. I'll put a link above um, to that. Um, just because we share our finances so you can see how much it actually costs. Um, but yeah, keep your expectations real. And it's great fun learning new skills about your camera and about filming and it keeps us busy. So Hilary Williams has asked, how do we get any prescriptions that we need on our travels? 
I am actually on a beta blocker heart tablet. Um, I took uh, a prescription with us when we left the UK. At the moment, those tablets haven't run out. The plan is that as we travel, if we get nearing the stage where we run out and need more, we will just book an appointment with a doctor. We have a letter from our GP explaining what we are on and why we are on it. And then we present that to the doctor. They then write us a new prescription and we just pay for it. It's as simple as that. Sue Scanlon from Dreamcatchers on Tour is very perceptive, my dear. She spotted this piece of artificial grass here on my dashboard and asked, why is it there? Um, well, actually my sister Sue gave it to me when we went off on our journey. And she said to me, if you ever find yourself where there isn't any grass, you can always put your feet on it. So you can always feel like you're in the countryside because I'm a country girl <laughs> heart. And I also have it there because my solar light, um, what are they called? Charging thingies. Yeah. Um, it's a charging thingy. It's a charging thingy. Sits there and it doesn't fall over. Just had a bang on the roof. Can you see her? Because I think she's up there. Hello. What are you doing in there? She's very naughty. I'll keep that closed so she doesn't get in. What are you doing? So Susan Wood has asked, what are leech socks? And they are to stop leeches getting into your trousers or anything getting hold of you. So when we were cross, uh, going to cross Russia and the grasslands, we were told about ticks. So I thought, actually, ticks are a little bit like leeches. So if we put leech socks, that will help. And what do they look like? They look like this. very flattering we actually bought them when we originally went backpacking in borneo and because the plan was that we were going to go to borneo whilst the van was being shipped from vladivostok um we had them in, we had them in the van there's nothing worse than getting a few leeches on your legs when you're jungle trekking catherine walker your question was do we have any hobbies and chris and i've just had a discussion about it because we used to, in our old life, have hobbies. I used to love my chickens and gardening, socializing with friends, uh, going out, doing that kind of thing. But this lifestyle, we're always busy. We, our hobby is living, really. Um, just going out and eating food and having Netflix nights and just experiencing life. That's actually my hobby. Although I haven't given up with the chickens yet. One of my besties, Jenny, gave me some chickens to take on holiday with me. Back home, I used to do Aikido every week. I love Aikido. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, the time and it's very hard to organize training on the road. But um, we keep ourselves busy filming, editing, uh, learning new skills um, online on YouTube and uh, forums like that. So yeah, no time for hobbies at the moment, but we are definitely enjoying life. Dave McLean has asked, do you now regret your decision not to take a ukulele with you? <laughs> actually, being in self-isolation, wouldn't that have been cool? Um, Marianne did actually buy me a guitar for my birthday a while back, and uh, I was playing, I got new strings put on it and everything, I was planning to bring it with us so I could learn it on the road but unfortunately there wasn't space in Trudy for the guitar and we decided it wasn't a priority at the time but yes during isolation I regret not having my guitar because that would have been a very cool thing to do I would probably have been busking around Istanbul by now if I had so here's some exciting questions Susan Hastings and Malcolm D have asked us did we manage to sort out our residency permits for Turkey? So we have applied for temporary residency in Turkey. We're not sure how long it's gonna get, um, it's gonna take to get the appointment. We're not sure whether we are gonna get granted residency, um, but we have started the ball rolling. So there'll be plenty more announcements on that as and when we have some information to share with you guys. So John Johnson has asked, what is the name of the music in our intro? We have actually had a number of intros since we started Tread the Globe, but the main one that plays when you log on to the channel 
is by Sign featuring Frank Moody uh, and it's called Be Free With Me and it is the Chez remix because there's quite a few out there. You can listen to it on YouTube. Uh, we actually got it from Epidemic Sound which is where we get our sound. As I said before, there's a link below. So a question from Finland uh, from Joe and Sue, Marco and Tilja. Um, how have you prepared for the roads, the different style of roads, and how have you found them since you've been driving around the world? So to begin we put all-terrain tyres on Trudy. We also put new shocks and springs under the van. Uh, we've only got to Turkey, so I would say the roads in Albania were being completely resurfaced, so that was a little bit rough, and the mountain roads. But apart from that, the roads have been really good. Uh, slow in places, but fine. I think the best is yet to come in Mongolia when we eventually make it there. So Heather Earp has asked us, what TV programs and radio stations do you listen to? Well, TV programs, we have Netflix in the van um, and we like to watch things like Ozark, so I enjoyed Breaking Bad. Yeah, I also like sci-fi and DC and Marvel and things like that as well. Music-wise, we have an MP3 that we plug into the van that we've got loads of our uh, music on that we just plug in while we're driving. The next question is from Jed Meacham. Hi Jed, how have you managed with insurance both for the van and yourselves please? Uh, right, okay, so for ourselves, we are with World Nomad. We were sponsored by A Plan, our in A Plan Thatcham, our insurance company. So they've covered us for our health. Um, they've also paid for us to have insurance for our travel for Trudy in Europe for the next year. Uh, for all the countries that weren't on our green card, as we were driving through them, we actually purchased insurance on the border. Um, currently in Turkey our insurance runs out in the next couple of days and we're in the process of trying to sort that out it's never ever simple to do insurance uh, but with a little bit of research and guidance you can always get there Gary and Julie Smith have asked is van life an expensive hobby that's actually quite a hard question to answer obviously you have to buy or rent a van um, so that varies very much whether you buy a second hand one or a brand new one. So you've got some fixed costs like road tax, MOTs and vehicle insurance. And then there are the costs that depend on how you live. Do you choose to drive around on toll roads or do you take the non-toll roads? How far do you drive affects your fuel costs. Do you choose to park in campsites that are paid or do you choose to wild camp uh, in free spots? And uh, these choices really affect the uh, cost of van life, but van life can be a very economical way of living. Brandon Musso also asked, what backpacks do we use? And they are overboard. Uh, we bought them because they're like dry bags so we can carry camera equipment in um, and everything, it keeps everything dry. The, they're really comfortable actually. We, we didn't get them free, we bought them and we would definitely buy them again. We love them. Uh, they've got like a pocket as well at the back. Um, I've got a 12 litre one and Chris has got a 20 litre one. Um, so that's what we have as bags. And then you also asked us about our walking boots, which are also not sponsored and very old. Um, I bought these probably about two or three years ago and um, I've used several packets of super glue on them uh, but they just keep going. I absolutely love carry more. Um, Chris also has carry more boots. They're only about 20 quid a pair and they just go on forever. Scott Filmer has asked how do we come up with the name of our lovely van? So what happened was I took my niece out for a trip in Trudy when we first bought her and she said, Uncle Chris, I think we should name your van. And we'd already come up with the name Tread the Globe. So I asked her, I said, well, what should we call her? And she thought for a moment and she went, Trudy the Tread Van sounds nice. And so Trudy uh, has stuck ever since and uh, that's why our van is called Trudy. 
The next question comes from Semi Uresoy and it says, I understand you have a concrete plan that includes Russia. Due to your concerns about weather, have you considered changing your route towards the south and going over India? Um, I think all plans can never be considered concrete because you have to, as we said, uh, take into consideration the weather elements. Um, also, there's visa issues for us as well. If we were to go south, we'd have to get a visa to go down into Iran. Um, and of course, we have a situation that is a world pandemic. So most options right now um, are very tricky and it's really important for us to be really flexible. So right now, we're staying in Turkey. And if you are interested in understanding the different options that are available to us and our thoughts on them, we actually did a video all about it and I will pop a link up above here for you. Uh, we've just had a message, a last minute message uh, through Instagram from Mert Koylulu. Sorry about my Turkish accent. And he's asked the question, where are you now? We are still currently in Istanbul. If you want to keep an eye on where we are during our travels, if you download the free app called Polar Steps, just search Tread the Globe and you will be able to keep a track on where we are. Yeah, I would also add, um, I don't know what I was going to add. Uh, in fact, if you don't barter, they'll think that, think there's, oh, come there, 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 sorry, cut. Oh, morning, Cinders. Oh, we've got it all going on here. <laughs> I'll be out in a minute. I'm not even dressed yet. No, out, Corona. <laughs> what was oh, I going to add? Um, Being in a van with me is amazing. It is, but obviously. hold on, hold on, because my brain's gone.